this Pac-12 story seems to really be uh, starting to take off right now um, in a wild twist, in a wild twist. And I thought all the shocking, stunning, breaking news storylines on the show were over related to the Pac-12, but apparently that is not the case um, because in a wild twist now, it, it looks like Oregon State and Washington State are in position to resurrect the Pac-12 brand going forward. And you can spin this into really anything that you want. You can call it, I know a lot of people like to call it a reverse merger. I don't even know what that means. What I know is that the Pac-12 brand is alive because Oregon State and Washington State are in advanced talks with the Mountain West to merge those two conferences with Gloria Navarra as the supposed commissioner of the new Pac-12 because as I am told this morning, the leadership of the Mountain West Conference is not at all opposed to adopting the Pac-12 name. The biggest question here, Jake, is will it be a good thing? Is it a positive move for the current Mountain West to take on the Pac-12 name? Well, I think it's a good move if you can keep the TV relationships. I mean, again, if you were, let's say, able to resurrect the Apple situation or let's say you were able to get CBS Sports Network to expand their buy in a new Pac-12 situation. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that could be potentially really good for a new Mountain West Pac-12 merger. But to me, I think the biggest thing here is who controls it? Because if it's Gloria, you're in a great place. This is someone who's proven that she has the ability to lead a conference and lead it through turmoil. I mean, again, I, and we're, we're not here to bash San Diego State all day, but that's kind of been the latest issue for the Mountain West, kind of handling that whole situation. So the idea that that conference was led through a tough time, she was able to smooth it out, able to work with her presidents to come to a solution, like that should show you that she has the business acumen and the relationship acumen to handle tough things. So I just think if, if the Mountain West schools – can bring these two remaining Pac-12 schools in. They can up the TV money. And I, I, it's a long shot long, because long we know shot. that the committee, uh, you know, the, the Power Four conferences are not looking to uh, give a new Pac-12 their automatic qualifier. But if you were somehow able to resurrect that, there's no doubt this would be a good move. But I doubt that happens. So really, this is just a money play. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any doubt that that what we've reported on this show is actually, in fact, true. Now, I mean, I think this is largely confirming the things we've told you for the last six weeks. One, again, I was able to confirm today that George Klyovkov is simply pushing paper. He is not involved in this equation at all. He is not involved with Oregon State and Washington State. Uh, he is not forming future plans. All George Klyovkov is doing at this point is facilitating the business of the Pac-12 through this season, nothing going forward. I think that is of significant note. And I think one of the bigger questions is exactly what you brought up, which is what happened to the TV deal. Because the Mountain West has a lot of really good things working for it. Its TV deal is not one of them. Uh, it's a $4 million deal per year per school. Uh, I was told today by multiple sources in the TV industry that a, a reimagined Pac-12 conference that would include Oregon State and Washington State and the current members of the Mountain West does not surpass $10 million a year per school. Um, so how lucrative this, this deal is, that, that remains to be seen. I am also of the belief that CBS and Fox want to keep that relationship I think CBS very much would like to have more brand on the West Coast. Uh, they already get that through the Big Ten Conference, obviously. But I think they'd like to have more reach. I think there's a ton of, of value below the P5 price tag, if you will, uh, in the Mountain West and the Pac-12. I think there is good reach there. I think they know they can sell it. I think they also know that Oregon State and Washington State joining the Mountain West is not worth 10, 25, 30 million dollars a year. That's just not going to happen per school. Um, so I would, <clears throat> excuse me, temper your expectations on that front. But, but I think it's really interesting that Oregon State and Washington State are the two that are really trying to drive this home. And I think it's wise business. I also think one of the biggest question marks here 
is Oregon State and Washington State's ability to keep the remaining assets in their pockets. And when I say the remaining assets, the emergency fund, the remaining money in the accounts uh, of the Pac-12, the infrastructure equipment uh, in the Pac-12 because they have a lot of broadcast equipment that's worth a significant amount of money. Uh, there is value in that for the current members. But if the conference lives on, it will be Oregon State and Washington State's position, I am told, that that is their money and that is those are their assets. And I think this is what we saw from Kirk Schultz yesterday talking about how within the week he would have a legal position that would excite Coug Nation. And, Jake, I think that's where this is headed. I think this is a court battle. Yeah, and I think that – you know, guys like Kirk Schultz don't really have another play, you know, and, and, and that's a tough part if you're Kirk Schultz. I mean, again, you you were not in the same position that Oregon State was in terms of PR. Oregon State is viewed as a victim, you know, an institution that really runs their ship tightly and is in a good spot, uh, but just was not in the driver's seat and was not in control and is, is victim of circumstance. But Washington State's a whole different beast because, again, you have an athletic department that is poorly run. Uh, you have a football team that seemingly is already overachieving based on the situation of their school, uh, and yet they are not going to be relevant and not going to make you the kind of money that you need to make because you don't know how to do that. And so your best play, I guess, is to sue and come up with a legal strategy uh, as to why you know, you, you I, I don't even know what your angle is, honestly. I, I don't know what angle they're going to try and roll out there. Yeah, I don't know. know. Like, I, I, I guess you're going to say that, you know, someone operated, uh, you know, below bar or something. I don't know. But the point really no, is. I, I, I think what the, the legal question here is, the current members of the Pac-12, do they have rights to the emergency funds? Because if they leave the Pac-12, which they all are, 10 of them are gone. Mm -hmm. If these 10 universities leave the Pac-12, but the Pac-12 survives, does that money go into the pockets of Washington State and Oregon State? What happens to the broadcast assets, the equipment, uh, the trucks, the infrastructure that is worth a significant amount of money? What happens to the, to the Pac-12 networks? What happens to all of that stuff that you have spent hundreds of millions of dollars on, I would believe that Oregon State and Washington State want that to be theirs. And I believe they want those assets to remain with the Pac-12 because the Pac-12 would move on while all of these other 10 schools move on to other conferences. Is that accurate? I don't know. This is not the same Pac-12. But then again, isn't that why Oregon State and Washington State want to fight so hard to keep the name? Yeah, and I and I and I think that there's there's value in keeping the name, but but again, it all depends on, yeah, like details like that. I mean, this is this is no different than you know handling you know a trust or a will or whatever. Like something's happened, and now you have all this value sitting here, and you have to figure out what goes where. And yes. I think that's a really tough proposition, especially when you consider the fact that it's not like Oregon State and Washington State are related in their family. I mean, the only relation they have is that they shared a conference. It's not like they're connected in any way outside of that bridge. So so to me, you know, if I was advising Oregon State specifically, I would tell them to be selfish and, and find their best possible footing in either the Mountain West or some sort of merger. But I don't like the fact that Kirk Schultz is the one sort of trumpeting this new legal strategy. Because, again, it, you have to understand that the way people look at you when you roll out a new legal strategy is super important. You know, if Gloria Navarez were going to roll out a new legal strategy, we'd be sitting here being like, damn, like this has traction, like she's credible, like this is serious. But because it's Kirk Schultz, you, you start to question, okay, well, you know, what exactly are they trying to get after? Because you can kind of understand, okay, trucks and TV assets and emergency funds and there's stuff here. But that doesn't really define what he's trying to get after for his school. It's much, in my mind, it's very similar to, hey, the Pac-12 needed a TV deal. You'd have thought they'd ask ESPN for even 30 mil per school. But no, we went up to 50. That's what I think is is tricky. That's what I think makes the slope 
kind of slippery here. We, I, I don't trust Kirk Schultz to come up with a reasonable mm -hmm. expectation, a reasonable game plan. Well, and and again, I don't know why you would. I think Kirk Schultz is proven to be a a, a terrible uh, athletic administrator. I mean, I, I I think that there are a lot of issues here, man. There are a lot of issues that I don't know that we have the answers to. I think when you look at um, the potential for teams to get into the college football playoff this year. Uh, you look at the potential of teams to get into the NCAA tournament this year. What happens to those distributions? Those are conference-level distributions. Uh, I think on the flip side of that, who's who's going to be responsible th for the, the dollar values that are assigned to Comcast? Who's going to be responsible for the Holiday Bowl uh, and their lawsuit against the Pac-12 and, and UCLA? I, I am told and have been told for months since all these stories have come out that the people that were under contract at the time of the breach of the contract are responsible. That'd be the 12 members currently in the Pac-12. Mm -hmm. But does that apply to the rainy day fund, the equipment, the infrastructure, all these things we're talking about? That's why the brand is so critically important to Washington State and Oregon State. Because if they just pick up and join the Mountain West, that's a very different dynamic, and I know a lot of people on this show have questioned, you know, my sanity about why I've said it's it's not a it is not a slam dunk that it's just going to be Oregon State and Washington State putting MWC on their uniforms in football fields, because I don't think it's a slam dunk. I think that costs them a lot of money, and those are athletic departments that have bills to pay and boosters to answer to, and I don't think that. I just don't think that they can do it that easily. No, I, I think it's complex. No, and I, and I think that you know once again, the, the this is the side effect. This is the shock wave of realignment. I mean, you're 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 having to deal with all these different dynamics. And again, I I also maintain that good business people here see an opportunity, which yes. is which is hey, we may very well be able to revive the brand, but it's just not going to be it's not going to be the same as it was. It's not going to be a Power 5 conference. It's going to be a group of 5. It's is not going to be like Is it worth reviving? Well, is the Pac-12 brand worth the fight? Well, I mean, I, I don't know that it's the brand that we knew is worth the fight, but I think the TV money is worth the fight. I mean, again, you're talking about whether you're a current Mountain West member or you're Oregon and Washington State. You're talking about, you know, probably if you were just to join the Mountain West Conference, what, getting, you know, what, $8 million maybe a school? You yeah. know, probably something like that. I mean, obviously, if you're going to add schools, you got to renegotiate your TV deal. So you'd probably get to eight, but if you can keep the Pac-12 brand alive and you can make some good decisions, then yeah, I, I, like you said earlier, like, hey, maybe you can get 10 and then maybe you can work something with the assets and X, Y, and Z and you go down, you wind up going down the list and you can make some more money. But I don't think we're sitting here saying, man, dude, it, like as an example, if the SEC were to die one day, man, this, this brand is worth fighting for. We've done some incredible things. Like, that's not the Pac-12. The Pac-12 is a very different brand, a very different conference. So, yeah, for these schools, is it worth reviving? Yes, but not because of the brand, just because of the money. I think that Oregon State and Washington State need to focus on winning because that's your quickest ticket to money. And it, when you look at the Mountain West Conference, let, let's say this merger happens. You're taking at, at minimum – a 60% pay cut mm -hmm. if you are Washington State and Oregon State at a minimum because I don't think they're getting anywhere near $10 million per school in the Mountain West. I don't. Um, the idea that, you know, I, I a ton of people tweeting at me today about how they would take from the AAC and take from the Mountain West, that's not happening. Yeah, That's not happening. This is a very focused, narrow conversation between the Mountain West and and Oregon State and Washington State. We are going to do business together. I am told, anyways, that they have pretty much said, yeah, we'd like to do business together. What does that path forward look like? And the path forward currently looks like, hey, let's bring the Mountain West under the Pac-12 umbrella, and we all make more money. That's not included in the money that's here now because you guys aren't getting any of that. Right. And I think that's a major sticking point for schools like Boise State who are putting a ton of money, millions and millions, into new facilities. And all of a sudden, they're just going to walk away from, uh, you know, a helping hand that they gave to two schools. 
and they're not supposed to share in that wealth. Man, I find that very difficult to believe. Well, yeah, I mean, the Mountain West schools have the ability to say, hey, like, we can provide you uh, a path to the playoff. We can provide you a path to more money at a minimum. I mean, just more money, generally speaking. And, and I think that's the... You know, that's both the hammer and the leverage play for the Pac-12, right? Yes, it on, is. Because on one hand, the Mountain West is going to say, hey, without us, you're not doing anything, right? You're not, you're, you're not going to a playoff. You're not having access to more money. You're not, you're not doing much. But without you guys, we don't really have a team that is even good enough to get to the playoff. So ultimately, as usual in college football, what's better for everyone involved is pretty much better for the bigger picture, right? If they can find a way to come together, they will make more money. And Mountain West schools, to your point, need to make more money. Boise State isn't the only one who's worried about, you know, facility renovations. I would remind you that Cal still has a massive debt load on top of their head. So Yeah, I, I don't know what the answer to it is. I think if I were the Mountain West, I would want, I would want part of the, the, the cash pot mm -hmm. that's going to be sitting there waiting for Oregon State and, and Washington State. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm throwing you a lifeline. Yeah. You are, you are drowning in the ocean. Hop on our cruise ship. I'm going to throw you a lifeline, but we're going to have to take some of that money to do it. Well, and I think that's the cost of survival. Again, it's the cost of being putting yourself in this position. You wouldn't have to be having this conversation if you had run a better conference, but yet here we are. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I just, I think it's a very, it's a very delicate thing. I, I'm curious what you all think in the comments section. I see all of your comments. Uh, we are already in 19 minutes, well over 500 comments. I appreciate that very much. Um, what do you guys think? Does the Pac-12 still have value? Um, for the record, I see a lot of people asking about ESPN in the comments. I think ESPN would have absolutely have interest in a reinvented Pac-12 conference that did not include George Klyovkov. Yeah. I think they would absolutely have interest in doing something. You're going to have to do something that includes Fox and CBS Sports mm -hmm. because they, they are your current partners. And anytime you change the structure of your, your conference, you open up your TV deal. So there's going to have to be conversations around that, but we'll – We'll certainly see, and I, I think it's, it's just a matter of time. And every day at this time, we tell you that Bucked Up Energy is the official energy drink of the Monty Show, and we're getting crazy today. You guys know that every day I tell you that it is watermelon. Well, a certain somebody over here didn't tell me we were out of watermelon buckshot today. Bet you weren't expecting this one. The irresponsible millennials on the show. The people that are in charge with serving their masters what? on the program what? did a terrible. That's what? probably that's probably hey, too, talking too, shit. too much. Saying that you're responsible for serving. Well, I am your man, but well, so you guys know what I'm saying. Um, I'm in the blue Raz can today. A buckshot. It's 200 milligrams of caffeine. Uh, a bunch of brain food that just helps you process things better. Helps you think better. You got one of those lingering headaches. You know one of those days where you just have a headache for most of the day? Pop a buckshot, that goes away. Oh, I do love me some blue raz. I do, it, I, I, I'm a huge watermelon guy. The blue raz is not bad yep. at all. That's what I like about bucked up. Whether it's buckshot, whether it's bucked up energy, pre-workouts, proteins, um, you know, collagen peptides, you name it, they make products with quality ingredients that do exactly what they say they're going to do. They make you feel better. They make you train better. They help you lose weight. I tell you guys all the time, the Buck Bar from Bucked Up has been a huge part of my weight loss. And I'm telling you, go get it now, buckedup.com. Use the promo code MONTY20 to get 20% off at checkout. I did check before the show. They are not sold out of Buckshot. They still have watermelon and I think blood raz on the site at buckedup.com. So it is not too late. Hook it up or get the free sampler pack of buck bars in the description below. Bucked Up Energy, the official energy provider of the Mount Monty Mountie Show. The Mountain Show. The Monty Program. T. Higgins is a badass is first on the Mountie Program. 
Mounty. Mount up, boy. <laughs> uh, T. Higgins <laughs> is a badass. Keep the pack together. Name Gloria Commissioner. Washington State, Oregon State, Boise, Fresno, San Diego. San Diego. Air Force, not Tulane in Memphis. Not a bad foundation. I don't see where you get Tulane in Memphis. Yeah, why are we talking about Tulane in Memphis? I don't know. That is not a possibility. No. That is, if you're Tulane in Memphis... This is the ACC thing, right? And the travel is just gut-busting. It is so expensive in human cost and in actual cost to travel that far. If you're Memphis, are you really going all the way out to the West Coast, the Rocky Mountains, probably half the season at a minimum? No, I don't think you are. Not, Not for less money than you're making in the AAC. Yeah. I don't know why you would do that, T. That's the... This idea, I understand why people want a coast-to-coast conference. I understand why people believe that the Mountain West and the AAC should merge and take Oregon State and... I saw that on Twitter today. No, they should not. I understand it. You think bigger's better. That's what thirty teams. It's too much. It, 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 thirty small market teams. Yeah, you're asking for trouble, man. You are asking to be bankrupt. I just I I don't see how it works. Hero seventy five for ten dollars. Not sure if it's true. Oh boy. Here we go. Heard the NCAA yearly payout for playoffs stays in the pack. Well, they haven't been to the playoff in a minute. So for the next couple of years, Oregon State and Washington State have total access to all payments. The NCAA has yet to pay. There is, I don't believe there is payment that's yet to be paid. I could be wrong. I mean, you're talking about NCAA tournament money, I think. Um, And yeah, if the conference lives on, yeah, that money stays in the conference. Absolutely, it stays in the conference. So... I'd have to go back and check, but I don't think there's deep. UCLA obviously has made some runs. I have to go back and check, but there's tournament money there. I know there's not there's not college football playoff money. Uh, JC for two dollars. Nah, F Wazoo. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Mountain West should run or draw the line. That's crazy. Why would the Mountain West not want to add Oregon State and Washington State? Why would you not want to do that? I mean, I think it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Uh, B, member for five months, B. Let's go, baby. Let's go, B. Appreciate you. Uh, is Apple still interested in the Pac-12's content? I don't believe they are. But I think the bigger question is, uh, if if you are Boise State, what is your value to Apple? All these numbers, did you guys see the Messi numbers that came out? Messi joins Inter, Mil- uh, Inter Miami in MLS. They pick up 110,000 new subscribers in that month. I'm for real. And they're still south. They have not gotten to a million paid subscribers. In fact, they're not close. By most estimates, when you take out T-Mobile and you take out season ticket holders and you take out promotions, they're at 600,000 paid subscribers only after Messi joined. Um. So is Boise State one of those things where Apple's like, oh, man, dude, bro, Tim Cook, CEO at Apple. Hey, Timmy, uh, we got to get Boise. That's the game changer it. for... yeah. You look at the brands in the Mountain West. Does Fresno State do that? Does UNLV do that? Does Nevada do that? Does does Tulane do that? Does Memphis do that? They don't. I don't think they do. So I haven't heard specifically that Apple is not or would not be interested in a new Mountain West. I just don't. From from my perspective and the conversations I've had, I don't believe that's the route that a new Pac-12 Mountain West would go. Yeah, well, and I think you already have existing relationships. That's the thing. Like, remember, the Pac-12 TV deal negotiation process 
didn't have really existing relationships. You were sort of trying to build a brand new grant of rights off of a fresh conversation with ESPN and obviously the major names. And, and because you were bad at what you did, most people didn't want to talk to you. So Apple really is only interested in something that they feel can really, you know, push paid, you know, subscribing supporters. And the problem is, is that you've lost all the brands that would do that for yeah. you. You know, you've lost Oregon, you've lost Washington, you lost all these big time name plates. And so for Apple, it doesn't make a lot of sense anymore. The ROI is not there. Not at all. And I, I think if you are, if you are, and if you are, I, don't, I mean, if you're CBS, you, that's, you already have an audience built in. Wazoo and, and Oregon State only add to that. If you're, if you're Fo FS1, if you're Fox on occasion, an audience is built in. They're trained to be there. Washington State and Oregon State add to that. If you're Apple, you have to regenerate and rebuild an entire audience in, in a subscriber base at that. I think that's very difficult. And I think a lot of people, one of the, the conversations I've had recently with a TV source is that there's renewed effort and energy to get into business with ESPN because of their direct-to-consumer model. And I don't think there's any doubt we're seeing that play out in this Spectrum Charter thing. Mm-hmm. Because the thing that ESPN provides you with direct-to-consumer is everybody's got a smartphone. And right now, is, is it easy to find Mountain West anything on a smartphone? <coughs> no. Not really. You have to go looking for it. Yeah. And if you are the SEC, you don't have to go looking for the SEC. You're on the ESPN app or ESPN's direct-to-consumer platform that's coming or a lot of people have a real interest in that. And I think the Mountain West would be wise for that. Hey, real quick, thanks to Eric who DM'd me to say that they restocked every flavor of Buckshot on the, uh, on the Bucked Up website. Yes! And they lowered the price to twenty nine ninety five for uh, a box of Buckshot. And then you use the promo code MONTY20. Um, so if you, let's just say you go blue Raz, right? You add that to your cart and then you go in, you go and check out and you, you say, okay, well, what's the promo code get me? Well, if you use the promo code Monty, you're getting a $6 savings wow. on one box. You're getting, you are getting buckshot for twenty four ninety five at, at buckedup.com. So I appreciate the DMs, everybody looking out. Thank you so much. I'm I'm actually while we're sitting here, I'm gonna I'm gonna put an order in because apparently, dude, I don't, I don't know. Unbeknownst why you to keep the pimp over here, unbeknownst I mean, to the pimp, you know. we are uh, apparently out of. I've been a rich man and I have been a poor man. We're apparently out of buckshot in the studio, which is I mean, it's really it's really. Are you a watermelon guy? Like where are yeah, you? Yeah, watermelon for sure. Okay. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I am. A, we are I mean, apparently. I appreciate out. you considering me in your decision here. I mean, that's. I'm not you know. really. If we're being honest, I'm not really. I'm just a cold-hearted sob. Uh, let's keep rolling with your comments on this new Pac-12 way of living. Uh, that's what it is. JC for two more dollars. Mountain West needs to man up and say no to the Pac-2. Why? Why would they do that? Why would they do that? Yeah. What? What sense does? Does that make? I'm, I'm a little confused about this. I need to I need to understand this. Yeah, I mean, can someone explain to me why if you're the Mountain West, a group of five conference, why you wouldn't what why you wouldn't want to add two formerly power five schools? I don't why? know why you wouldn't want to do that. Uh, are, are, are we confused about the concept of Oregon State having an actual legitimate chance to get into the college football playoff next year when it's expanded? Right. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know why you wouldn't do that. You know, like I, I just, I think you're being jaded. I, I don't know if you have an ax to grind. I mean, we perhaps. agree. We agree. Like you guys all agree that Oregon State has a legitimate path to the college football playoff in its expanded form. Yeah. Right? Like right. we all understand that, hey, they're no longer in a Pac-12 conference that's loaded with some of the best teams in the country. They're in a conference. And again, I know... Hey, going to the Mountain West could impact recruiting, will impact recruiting. Yep. Like, sure, they're going to take a bit of a hit. 
But you can't tell me they're going to go from a 10-win team to a one-win team. That's not going to happen. Yeah. And, and, and to me, you know, the, the Mountain West is no longer just some cakewalk for San Diego State on the football field, right? Now, now we're talking about, hey, the Mountain West potentially uh, is going to be a three-team conference between San Diego State, Washington State, and Oregon State. And then everyone else is following along. And Boise State, obviously, is going to have something to say. But, you know, if they were to add these two schools, I just think – I just don't know how you aren't advocating for this. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think you're crazy. If you're looking past this, I think you're crazy. By the way, I just bought five boxes of Buckshot, and, yes, and yes, yes. I saved $42.53. Wow. I bought a bunch of Buckshot. So I got That's five. That's a legitimate savings. Yeah, dude. it is. It's huge. I got I – got, uh, what is that? Six, four, five, six, seven boxes. Stay hard. That's that's legit. Promo code Monty twenty uh, saved me forty two dollars and fifty three cents. You're welcome. Please have at it. Do it. <laughs> Hit it. That's what I'm saying. Hello, Billy. Uh, if they stay the pack, wouldn't they continue getting payments for bowls and tournaments for two years? I, I, I don't. I, I'm not going to sit here and pretend to know all the exact details and what the pro rata they deserve is. <laughs> See what he did there. So that was a that was a reference to when some you know foolish president at a school located in San Diego, not to be named, not to be named, she who shall not be named, uh, went out on a limb and said she and her team of folks deserved a pro rata. So that was kind of a, a joke there. We're golfing in uh, Anaheim on Sunday morning, <laughs> and this is on my Instagram, the Monty Show, M O N T Y, the Monty Show. And Jake, we're, we're standing on this raised tee box, this beautiful raised tee box. And Jake's about to hit this drive, and he's like, let me see if I can get us the pro rata we deserve. <laughs> 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 it is one of the funniest things that I, I have not laughed like that playing golf in a while. Mark Stone, a member for a month. Mark hey, Stoney. Let's go. Appreciate everybody in the membership. Hey, guys, love you. And let's get hard, right, Monty? Okay, it's not. Stay hard. Dude. Bro, okay, if you're going to reference drops, and I love you, Stoney. Get hard. It's not get hard. It's stay hard, okay? Stay hard. Like, you know, we have to make sure it's the little details, okay? That you got to get stroked. Yeah, that you're is. combining look. stay hard and get stroked. We can't do that. We can't do that. This. Stay hard. That's David Goggins. You got to get stroked. And that's Brooks Kepka. Yeah. Very different. Stay hard. You gotta get stroked. David Goggins, his big his big phrase at the end of all his videos is Stay hard. So But I, I love you, dude. Appreciate Thank you. you, Mark. Yeah. I don't get I don't do that with other dudes. But you know I don't do that's that up to you. with other dudes. I'm so bricked up right now. That's up to you, man. Uh Hero seventy five. Sorry, I should have been clear. I meant if a pack team makes the playoff this year, the payments stay with the pack for the next couple of years, correct? Oh well yeah. I mean if you made correct. it this year, but I think that you know, that's a really interesting proposition because I, I think that's, you know, you've only got really two teams. I mean, maybe three. Like, if you want to go USC, Washington, and Utah. I mean, Oregon, I guess. But we got to see if Bo Nix is that guy or not this year. You know? But those three, I feel like, are your most reliable opportunities. Yeah. No, no question about it. And I think as we sit here and talk about Pac-12, Mountain West, merger extravaganza, you know, we'll we'll see what that, what how all that plays out. T Higgins is a badass. Bless the state. Only Mountain West. I would get Apple TV four. Well, there's that. There is that for sure. Um, let's see. Uh, Jeff Woodworth. Uh, only soccer I watch is Ted Lasso. Never seen it. <laughs> uh, Arizona Sun Salad. Direct to consumers. Death of all cable companies. Yes, it is. Yep. And you look at what happened today at ESPN. Pat McAfee moved his show to ESPN today. Today was day one. And I think it is, this whole conversation, it is the exact same question. The exact same question. What is sports like for you? Not for me, not for Jake, not for two holes. Right. For you. What is your sports watching experience? I am somebody that every day I live this show for 12 hours. All we do is sit around here, talk about sports, play golf, watch guys talk about sports like we live it. 
when I'm a sports fan, I'm watching Pat McAfee's show. When I'm a sports fan, I'm watching the NFL kickoff tonight on NBC at, at, at you know, 820 Eastern. Mm-hmm. I'm playing prize picks in baseball. Like My sports life is very similar to yours. But you look at this direct-to-consumer thing that ESPN is doing, and you look at the battle that ESPN currently has with you know, Charter and Spectrum, there's no win here for Charter and Spectrum. There's just not. Their consumer is pissed. There, there's, there's just no two ways about that. And the hardest part for cable companies is they're becoming less and less necessary to the American consumer. Because so many of us cut the cord. I'm a YouTube TV guy. I'm getting my Sunday ticket on YouTube TV. So when we talk about places like the Mountain West and this Pac-12 thing, they have to find a way to be relevant on people's phones. That's ESPN. So you don't have to love ESPN. And I know a lot of you do not. You don't have to love it at all. But when you want sports talk and Pat McAfee's on ESPN, where are you going to go? You're going to ESPN. That's, that is as simple as I, as I think it is in the way that we, we do business. So this comment right here about the death of cable companies, I think that's exactly right. I, I, and I furthermore, I look at the, the pro sports rights deals that are being done right now, this Diamond Sports Group failure that has happened where you're looking at the Arizona Diamondbacks going back to Major League Baseball because – Diamond Sports Group just could not make those payments or chose not to. You look at the Las Vegas Golden Knights deal that that Script Sports basically broke the details on this show when Brian Lawler, the president of Script Sports, came on and he talked about the fact that, hey, yeah, you know, um, we're going to do the sales and the marketing for the Las Vegas Golden Knights. And we're going to have them on Scripps Ion stations in Nevada, Utah, and Idaho. That's how TV deals are going to get done. Yeah. And you look at Matt Ishbia, the new owner of the Phoenix Suns, trying to take it local in Utah. You look at the owner of the Utah Jazz. What's he doing with his TV rights? He went back to local TV. There's no more regional sports networks. You all remember Fox Sports Chicago, Fox Sports your mom. Like, yeah, those largely don't exist anymore. There's some NBC Sports Bay areas floating around out there, but in 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 the the grand scheme of things, things are shrinking back to how can I get to the most people, and how can I get those people to combine with my my corporate sponsors? It's the bottom line. It's the most basic equation. In all of sales, how am I going to take my my clients and connect them with consumers? That's what we're doing. And we're in sports talk, but we're actually a sales company that happens to do sports talk. Mm-hmm. The Las Vegas Golden Knights are a sales company that sells hockey. They're not a hockey organization who also has a sales entity. They're a sales entity that sells hockey. Yeah, And don't get that twisted in the NBA, Major League Baseball, the NFL – they're all sales company that sell their sport. And you look at this to direct to consumer thing, you're got darn right. That's the death of cable companies. Absolutely. No doubt. OG Gary, how are you, my guy? SEC ain't hard to find. Hell no, it's not. No, it's not. Turn on any channel. Flip on anything on your phone. Somebody's talking about Nick Saban. We're going to talk about our guy Dabo Sweeney. ACC, ACC talk lately has not been hard to find. Pac-12 talk, Mm. it's been hard to find. Unless you're the 7 million people that watched Prime the other day. (laughs) Right? Yep. That's called value. Do you believe? Uh, I do believe. I do believe. Raider Mark, YouTube TV was awesome on my iPhone. Yeah. (laughs) Your iPhone, I love the quad box. I love it. That four pack. Yep. Sunday ticket's going to be legit. It is absolutely going to be legit. Now, for part of Sunday ticket, of course, I'll be up in Park City playing golf at Canyons Golf. Right. But Sunday ticket's going to be legit. Yeah, but the, again, YouTube TV on my phone while I play golf. Yes, exactly right. Conference Commissioner Gumby, SEC ain't hard to find. Just go to the southeast. See, get on a plane and tell them to fly southeast. Well, it depends on 
If you tell them to fly southeast from the southeast, you're probably not going to land up in the southeast. Yeah. That, that's advice from Uncle Monty to you, okay? Like, I'm just, uh, I'm over here trying to help you out, kid. Right, right. You know. I should probably move on. Mike Smith, I doubt they go. Uh, they do direct to consumer. Oh, they're doing it. Oh, they're doing it. There's no question. Cord cable is the old thing now. The new thing is YouTube TV, Fubo, Hulu Live. It's basically cable bundle on intertubes. But here's the problem. None of them have ESPN. Yeah. Like YouTube TV is a little different. It's Google. Google owns YouTube TV. Yep. Owns YouTube. Like if you search for Pac-12 expansion or ACC expansion or Big 12 expansion on Google, you're going to get the Monty show. We kill SEO, YouTube and Google. That's how the world goes around. Yep. The thing with YouTube TV and ESPN is ESPN gets a $25 check every time somebody signs up for YouTube TV. <laughs> Excellent strategy, sir. Whether they ever turn on ESPN or not, ESPN gets $25. Yep. That's, that's leverage. And that's every single day in this country people are signing up for YouTube TV. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. So the direct-to-consumer model is not if. As Bob Iger, the, the boss at Disney, said, it's not if. It's when. And this fight with Charter and Spectrum where, and I don't know how many of you know this, I'm sure you do. Charter and Spectrum currently do not carry ESPN, ABC, Disney, none of the Disney products. What are they fighting over? Are they fighting over carriage rights for Disney, Disney Channel for ABC? No. You know what they're fighting over? Streaming. And the fact that Spectrum and Charter want to bundle ESPN Plus, Disney Plus, and Hulu Live and sell it to Charter Spectrum customers and ESPN would get none of that money. So ESPN said, nah, bro, can't do that. Sorry. So they're in a standoff. Yeah. Who's going to win that standoff? ESPN. Is winning that standoff. Because what's going to happen Monday night for Charter Spectrum customers? They're not going to have Monday night football. Um. You think that doesn't matter? You think they're there? So let me get this right. All weekend long, you're not going to have college football on ESPN. And if I have to remind you of what the games are, yeah, let me remind you of what the games are. Oh, it's just that, you know, that little you know, afternoon game. Nobody like, I don't know, Notre Dame on ABC. Notre Dame, our mother. Uh, Utah Baylor, ESPN. You know. Uh, Ball State, Georgia. Is Georgia any good or important? Yeah, they're on uh, the SEC network, which is owned by ESPN. Oh. Uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, how about uh, our, our that little uh, itty-bitty Old Miss Tulane game? Mm. Not going to be on TV. Texas A&M in Miami, not going to be on TV. Austin P in Tennessee, not going to be on TV. I mean, the list, you guys, the list is endless. Oklahoma and SMU not going to be on TV. Oh, by the way, there's also that game. I know these are two nobodies, and there's not anybody on earth who wants to watch Alabama and Texas. Oh, God! Five o'clock, ESPN. Uh, that game won't be on, Charter mm. or Spectrum. Yeah, boy, that's a bummer. Ow! And the list just goes on and on and on. Wisco and Washington I mean, State. ESPN's got the hammer, dude. Like, it, it, it just is that simple. And that's just the top 25 games in the country. Forget the regional stuff that you want to watch because they're your team. So they'll be pissed off. Then we'll get to Sunday, and you'll have no Sunday NFL countdown. Oh, right. You'll have... No Scott Van Pelt. You'll have no Sports Center. You'll have no NFL Live. Then we're going to get to Monday and you'll have no NFL reaction. You will have no Pat McAfee show. You will have none of that. And then we're going to get to Monday night and you'll have no Monday night countdown. Which is going to lead you to go to YouTube TV, in which case ESPN gets paid anyway. So why is it exactly that ESPN would give in to anything that Spectrum wants? And I, listen, I understand it. I understand it. I know people are frustrated about it, but that's the reality of the TV game. And I know that 
Most people, I obsess over it. I know most people don't give a damn about that. The bottom line is, it's going to go directly to us. ESPN is going to cut out every cable and satellite company and serve ESPN and all of the ESPN family and networks directly to your phone, tablet, computer, and TV. They're going to cut all those people out. Keep it real. And if you're like us, where do we watch ESPN now? I watch it on an app, on a TV. Or I watch it on YouTube TV, depending on what I want to watch and how I want to watch it. First round of major golf, it's on ESPN+. Plus. Always on ESPN+. Typically Plus. 10 a.m. So it this is not a small thing. And yeah. I know a lot of people think it's a small thing. It's not. And, and listen, for all the people today who I heard on various shows. We listen to we listen to Rome today, Pat's show obviously. We listen to Fine Bomb. We had all kinds of people calling into these shows today saying things like, "Man, these these these, you know, TV companies, Spectrum and ESPN and, you know, all these people have got all kinds of money, more money than I think the the reserve someone said. The Federal the Reserve. The Federal Reserve. They need to figure it out. Well, no, it's not they need to figure it out. No, Spectrum needs to figure it out because ESPN's got this thing figured out. Yeah, it is a well-oiled machine. I would agree. A uh, couple, uh, couple more comments right before football at 50. Mark Stone, you have to get hard to stay hard. Stay hard. Come on, man. <laughs> dude, rock solid, baby. I'm with you, dude. Mark Stone. I like me some Paige Speronic. Stay hard. I, I know, Risa. I don't know that I do. Are you a Paige fan? I mean, she's a good looking girl, but she the way she markets herself has it's a too high much. burnout factor. It, 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 uh, it's too much. It's too much. Mark Stone again. Mark, every time I say your name. Stay hard. Uh, I used to have YouTube TV, but got Hulu because YouTube didn't have channels that Hulu does. I'll, I'll be honest with you, Mark. I've never interacted with Hulu at all. Yeah. On any level, any platform, I've never seen it. Now, my nieces, I believe my, uh, my nieces have it. Mm -hmm. I don't have it. So I, I don't, I love YouTube TV. What channels does Hulu have that YouTube doesn't? I'd be, I'm curious about that. That's what, a great what, question. Yeah, what like, channels? what did you get, Mark Stone? Stay hard. That from Hulu. <laughs> That you didn't get from YouTube TV, Mark Stone. Stay hard. I'm just curious. 